today we're looking at Robert Oster's Chocolate Brown. Hi, I'm Adam and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Robert Oster's Chocolate Brown, as it sounds, is in fact a brown ink. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I first do the writing samples, I then put the ink into a different pen for a day, I then put it into a Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya with their Flex Nib to take my notes for this video. And before we get to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is the chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I have learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done, and what we see is a very light brown that pushes up that paper. Now, there is a darker line at the bottom, but it's very light khaki that moves up, and it becomes immediately a dark brown. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And we don't get too much of that light khaki that we got from the original chromatography. We get a much darker, there's a very thin area of khaki, and then it becomes gray up into brown. This gives me the idea that this ink might have a little bit of hold on. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to hold up on paper, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean out of your pens. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it does spread out some. It doesn't become illegible, but that extra fine that wrote that the word high definitely looks more like a broad medium at this point. I don't know that I would take important notes with it. Water reactivates and pulls most of the ink up off the paper, leaving only that khaki color behind. I feel that given more than 30 seconds of water, it might completely remove it. Pen flush does exactly the same thing the water does, except it pushed it away some. We see almost all the ink come up off the page, leaving the khaki behind. Also, because it looks so similar to water, I feel like water's all that would be needed. Now bleach, as would be expected, is completely removing it from the page, leaving only a little bit of this kind of yellowy tinge behind. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Diamine Chocolate Brown has a viscosity of 1.86, which makes it a wet ink. Quite wet. Not quite chasing the red area, but certainly a wetter ink than normal. To find my average dry times, I use the writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Diamine's Chocolate Brown has an average dry time of 19 seconds, which is normal. It's on the higher side of normal, but it is normal, and considering that this ink was like working its way towards the watery area, that to me is pretty good. Now, let's look at that writing sample. So I picked this ink up in sample form. And to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub. I use a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's look at Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. It's such a dark brown. It's black. The extra fine gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. 14 seconds to dry. Still super dark brown. You kind of have to know it's a brown to see the brown in the writing. The medium gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Again, you have to know it's a brown to see it as brown. Other than that, you would see it as black. I've tested this out with some people at work where I'd write a little bit and I'd say, hey, what color do you think this is? And they go, black. I said, of course it's black. Thank you. It says brown. It says chocolate brown. Should probably, you know... Do a dark chocolate brown. Hmm. Scrubby shows us no color variation. Smear says we can recover this. So I test this on Tomoy River because it's one of my standards. And what we have is no bleeding, definite ghosting, 
the 1.1 1 .1 1.1 gives us definitely, I think this is a rollover from the last video. I'm going to stop. The 1.1 gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Super, super, super dark. And it's weird because when I put it as a, a, a sample or as a smear test, just to be able to test it, it looks brown there it looks black there. Extra fine gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, and you get to wait an eternity, 21 seconds, for the extra fine to dry. Medium gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, but hey, in comparison, it's practically the same time, only 26 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby shows us we're not going to get any color variation in this ink, Extra fine and medium both give us nothing. The smear test says don't write on Tomoe River if you're going to make a mistake. Rhodia paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Super, super, super dark. Oh my god. But at least with the extra fine it gets lighter. Finally something. It gets a little lighter with the extra fine. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. 16 seconds to dry. At least it's a lighter tone. But then along comes the medium and it gets darker again. No feather, no spread, no echo, or sorry, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade with the medium. 19 seconds to dry. The scrubby shows us we're not going to get any color variation. The smear test says you can recover it. When I wrote my notes with this, I used the FPR Himalaya with their flex nib, and it looks black. Eh, looks black. So I went to look on could different tone paper affect things. So I checked the yellow rhodia in the hope it would do something for me. Now the yellow rhodia gives us no bleeding, no ghosting, as expected with that. Oops. The 1.1, I mean, if we just look down the tones, that's how sort of strong this color is. It doesn't change tones. So to just go through it, the 1.1 gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Dark. Extra fine, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. 16 seconds to dry the medium. Still no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. 19 seconds to dry. <sighs> I should breathe. The scrubby shows us that we're not going to get any color variation in this. The smear said you could recover it. So I'm trying to get something with this ink. So I checked it on Original Crown Mill. Now the original Crown Mill, other than it, when I put down uh, the scrubby, it didn't bleed. We get no real ghosting. It shows more on camera than it does in person. The 1.1 the gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Still super dark. Gets lighter for the extra fine, which is nice. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Nine seconds to dry. I can't crack the coat of this ink. I'm trying to get it to give me something other than... A brown that's so brown it's almost black. And I just can't crack the code on this ink. I'm just unimpressed. I'm whelmed, some might say. Medium. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. 12 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both the extra fine and the medium say you don't get any color variation. The smear test says... This is what the texture of the paper looks like, but not your writing. So I looked at black and red notebook. Different papers perform differently. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 gives us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Super dark brown again. Almost black, if not black. The extra fine, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. And we have a little bit of shade. A little bit of shade. Just little bits. I don't know if the ink was having a bad day and accidentally put out some shade. We get a little bit of shading in quick. We get a little bit of shading in jumps. A little bit in dogs, and that's it. But there's some. The ink messed up and gave me some shading. Ha. 11 seconds to dry. The medium, the ink got its act back together again. We have no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, and it is dark. It is a dark, dark. 
brown that is black again at 13 seconds to dry. The scrubby, the extra fine shows us that we can get some color variation. You're not seeing it there, but you get to see it here. On the left side of the scrubby, you see that you, it is a little lighter, just a tad lighter. It shows up more in the writing than it does in the scrubby. The medium shows no color variation, and the smear test for both says you could recover this if you accidentally smeared it while you were writing. So there's some good news. Not the color of the ink, but, you know, hey, that is what it is. You, you got winners and you got losers, and I'm sorry, Diamine, I'm not a fan of this one. If you like this ink, that's great, and I hope you enjoy it. Tell me that you like this ink. This is just not the brown ink for me. That's all I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Diamine's Chocolate Brown, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I've chosen Diamine's Pumpkin Orange because I always feel that orange goes so well with brown inks. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Diamine's Chocolate Brown? It looks more black than brown to me and I have no need for that. It's another chocolate brown I don't care for. And I like brown inks. Something about the name chocolate, when they put it onto inks, it's like they have no idea what they're actually giving it as its name. Now, if it's supposed to be a dark chocolate, then that would make some sense, but they're not calling it dark chocolate brown. They're calling it chocolate brown. Makes me think of milk chocolate. Perhaps that's my mistake. Thanks for watching.